Giselle, I'm gonna move over to this side of the couch. Now, in our intro to you, in the intro to the show, season one premiere, you described your ex Jamal as, quote, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. So fans, I think, were really surprised when you decided to give him another shot years later. Do you regret doing so, or at least regret putting that on camera? No, I, I, if you know me, you know I have no regrets. Um, no, I mean, he and I have been knowing each other for 20 plus years. Um, we have three beautiful daughters. So at that time, I felt like it was another time, and he, and he was in a different space mm -hmm. and mental space. So I felt like it was, a, it was, if ever we were going to get the family back together, that was like the time to try. Um, that didn't work out, but you know, I, would, I think I would have regretted not trying. Yeah, for sure. And that statement was from season one. And as we're entering season eight, you are bringing a new man into that season, a new man on your arm, who's also a part of this Bravo universe. How does it feel coming into the Potomac season with this new man on your arm? Look at that smile. Um, Feels good. What's the question? <laughs> How good does I mean, it feel? I mean, I'm in a great place. I, I have said that this season eight for me has been a season in which I wanna just be with the people that I love and have fun with and vibe with and party with and that support me and, and he's a part of that. Yeah. You know, he's somebody that um, I can tell my deepest secrets to and I know he's never gonna repeat it to anyone else and to have that is a great part of just my everyday. And maybe it feels a little good since Karen had shaded you over your relationship status, your dating status, that you can bring this relationship in and rub it in her face a little bit. No, does that it, feel good? It doesn't take much to rub something in Karen's face. My question is for all of you ladies, you obviously get a lot of love and support, but you also do get a lot of criticism. So my question is, if any of your kids come and tell you that they wanna be a real housewife, what would you say to them? Would you approve? And what advice would you give to them? Absolutely not. I think my daughters like see me doing it and they don't even think it because they realize like it's kind of a unique thing. It's not something you strive to become. It's something that like magically happens by pure, you know, bolt, luck. lightning bolt. Luck. Yeah. And so they wouldn't even imagine that it was something to aspire to be. My daughters want no parts at all, um, but, but they appreciate, not appreciate, but they understand when the cameras come and it actually makes them very proud of their mom because they see all that we do and, and they understand, they understand the late nights, they, they get that it's like extremely tiring, but um, yeah, they want no parts at all. I don't, I don't have to worry about that. You don't either, you have boys, Rob. But Teresa, I think a lot of people want to know about Gia. We see her a lot on the show. Well, I think she's too young to get married. <laughs> yeah, she's too young to get married right now. But you know, if she wants, I mean, if that happens, if that's on her. I mean, I, it's, I, you know, it's her life. I know my second daughter will want no part of it, Gabriella. And yeah, Melania, she, she, she likes the show, so I could see her maybe doing it in the future. And Adriana, I'm not sure yet, she's 14. It's my question's for Kyle. I'm just wondering if the reason why the reunion may have been so emotional last year, was that because of what was going on behind the scenes with your marriage and just so much happening that it was just overwhelming? No, it actually wasn't. It was just stuff that was going on behind the scenes with my sister and me and the things that weren't said you know, on camera. So that's what made it really difficult. And I knew that going into the reunion that day, that it was like, there, there was a lot at stake and I, I really thought if we can't fix it here, that's, that's gonna be it. And I thought when we left there that day that I probably wouldn't speak with my sister again and vice versa. So that's why I was so emotional. I want you to have some fun this season, Kyle. I hope you have some Maybe fun. Maybe I'll have to wait till another season. <laughs> no, we did have fun this season. <laughs> um, I think I see a familiar face at the microphone over yeah, here. Yeah, so do I. Is that who I think that is, sir? Can you step up to the microphone and hey, say your name and ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, babe. If you had to be locked in an elevator with one Bravo celebrity, who would it be? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, should I say 
who, who said it yesterday? Lala. Yeah, Lala. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, Lala said she didn't want to be locked in an elevator with me. And yes. Louie? Yeah, and Louie. Okay. But I think it would be a dream. We would have so much fun. Yeah. She's so, a lot of fun. Yeah, I know. And she DM'd me and she said sorry. Yeah, it was sweet of her. <laughs> Robin, I want to ask you a question. and It goes into relationship status because you've been very open about your relationship and the things that you've gone through. Um, when Potomac kicked off, you were divorced from Juan, but you guys were living together. But now you're remarried to Juan. Let's give a round of applause for that. But the two of you have dealt with a lot of drama surrounding your relationship on the show. What has been the hardest part about putting your unconventional situation out there for the world to see? Um, it's just been hard because I understand why we do the things that we do. It's been my norm since we were 17 years old. Juan and I have been in, in we started dating when we were 17. And so we're not only best friends, we are, our families are greatly intertwined. His aunts are my aunts, my parents are his parents. So our relationship is a lot deeper than what people see on the surface, like what the cameras can capture. So it's just been kind of hard of just seeing people really not understand the depth of our relationship and just questioning why we do what we do. And of course, like for me, family is like everything and providing a nice solid home for our boys is our motivation. And I can say it's, it's kind of backwards, it's funny, I know a lot of people say the show breaks people's relationships apart. The show actually brought us closer together because of all of the scrutiny and so I was like, we gotta have each other's backs. So we were kind of forced to really have each other's backs to tune out all of the outside noise because I think it's the outside noise that really tears people apart. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm gonna move on to this side of the couch and get to Heather Gay. Hi. We gotta talk about Salt Lake City. Season four is on fire. What has shocked you the most from this season so far? Or maybe what we haven't seen yet? Well, I think the biggest surprise and shocker is just the transition of my relationship with Lisa Barlow. Because we started the show out, um, you know, two thumbs up, fighting and it was just really at each other's throats. And this year we discovered some, you know, things that we had in common and I realized a lot of things that I had done wrong, which I is hard to accept. And I have like so much love and admiration for her now that I didn't ever think I could get there. And now that it's there, it makes me realize um, our part in everything, you know? And I just mm. love that I can look back and see that and see that growth. And I think that's a nuanced thing. Like there's a lot of fun things that happen on the show, but the relationships are what make the show work. And my relationship with Lisa changed. And the fact that it changed four years in, I think speaks to the show and the power of it. 